we need to go in and do some cleanup on this. We need to do a little bit of trimming and clean this up. So let's talk a little bit about trimming and uh, keeping things. Now there are two icons. There's a keep and a trim, and they're on either toolbar, unbounded or bounded, and they both do the exact same thing on both toolbars. But I want to explain, why do we have two buttons? Well, keep is the opposite of trim, and trim is the opposite of keep. Or another way of saying it is keep and trim work exactly the same way, but they do the opposite thing. Let's talk about keep. If I pick on keep, the prompt at the bottom says select ref reference element. If I just on the screen pick an element, it will automatically keep it between the next two adjacent elements. So if I do a yes button, it's going to automatically keep it between this circle and this circle. Do a left click to say yes to confirm. And now you see it's kept this between here and here. Now let's do the opposite. Let's say I go over and say trim, and I pick the line to the right of that. I click the same spot, and I say yes. It now automatically trims off that line between the next two adjacent elements. Now that's not what we want, of course, so we'll do an undo. This is a case where I will use undo to put the line back the way it should be. So let's go back to keep again. Again, when you do an undo or escape, or hit the select arrow, it automatically cancels the command. So we go back, we hit keep, we want to keep the element, we say yes, and now it keeps it to here. Now I do the same thing on this little arc here. I only need to keep this little piece of this arc. So I click right here and say yes, it automatically trims it to here. Now let's talk about that for a little bit. Let's window in closer. If I'm in keep and I keep pick here a second time, it will automatically trim it to the axis line. So the axis lines can be used also for keeping and trimming as well. Next we have is called changing dimension. Uh, what changing dimension uh, does is certain dimensions, if I pick them, I can go in and change like the leader size, the font. Uh, I can't change the text inside of it, but I can change what the arrow is, things of that nature. So it's just changing the parameters inside of that particular dimension. Then the last one is the dimensioning parameters. And this is probably the more important of all of these. And the dimensioning parameters sets the overall settings for dimensioning. For example, what's your layout distances? What's the leader? It'll, it'll highlight in red what you're showing. What's the witness? That's this. What's the datum? And what's the witness extension? Do you want to auto, auto center, yes or no? And do you want to do horizontal, force it to be above, force it to be below, or force it to be in the middle? So you, you choose which method, and then the drawing scale. So you can adjust the drawing scale as well. Uh, on the text side, this is where you'll identify which font you're using. So you pick which font and style and size. And then settings such as you want any prefixes or suffixes. This is handy for tolerancing. It knows where the feature ends. Let's say, for example, I wanted to take and cut from here and continue on up to here. All right, so we'll window in a little closer. And I've got my direction already going like so. So what I've done is I've done a reverse right here. I reverse the direction of my feature so it starts here and goes this direction. Okay. We'll window in a little closer so I can see this easier. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that feature for editing. We'll do that by clicking on manual chain. I'm going to pick right on top of that feature. When I click on it, it says manual chain one. I do a left click and yes, and now what it's saying is, is choose next element. So what I've just done is I've just opened that feature. And of course where it opens it at is at the end of the feature. So it won't open at the start, it'll open it at the end. So now I can say the next element I want is this arc. Now being careful not to snap snap point, because if I snap the snap point, let me show you what happens. If I click right here, all it's going to do is like draw a line in between those two. See it doesn't include that that arc. And if that ever happens to you, don't panic. Do one of two things. Now you can hit your escape key, which will take you out of the command altogether. It'll take you back to where you can start over editing that feature. There's also another step we'll, we'll talk about a little later, which is called move back. Here and, and use a different technique. So I'm going to grab the opposite edges on the other side. I'll grab, say, this guy. I'll hold my control key down, grab this one, and this one, and this one. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this icon right here called a wall. And so these edges, or excuse me, not edges, faces, I should say, say it correctly. Let me go ahead and regroup those again. 
explain it again. I'm picking faces from the solid. One thing I want to point out from a solid I should point out is that you can pick edges. You can pick loops, which are just like the, the frame around the, the face. You can pick individual faces. Okay, so I'm picking a face. I'm going to hold my control key down and pick these other faces. And now I'm going to go across and pick this icon, which is a wall. So a wall is going to have thickness to it, as opposed to an auto chain, which does not have thickness to it. So if I click on this wall, now I'm going to have this feature. And this feature has a property of depth. If I go to this is 5 profile, you see it has a property of depth, which equals the depth that we extruded this cutout to make in this solid. And now the next thing I have is I've got these circles here. This circle that goes through the part and actually these other holes go through the part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all those and do them all at once. A quick and dirty way of doing that is use your filter and say circle, put a box around the part and now you've got them grouped. Now I'll show you another way you could group this too is we could go up and change the filter back to all and if you do a right click out in the graphic area and go to group, you get a little menu that pops up. And now I could say circle and turn that on. You can also pick and drag to the bottom and turn a checkbox, turn them all on or all off. We just want circles. And I hit OK, it's going to group all the circles. Now it gave me one extra circle, so I'll hold my control key down and take it out of the group. Right click till it says a, a circle, C. That says C. Uh, right click again. There we go, C95. Do a left click, say yes. Now it's out of my group. So now I have six elements. Again, if you have trouble doing that, you can always go back, like I said uh, a moment ago, hit circle, put a box around your part. The key is you want to make sure that you have only six elements in your group. You do not want this circle here. Six elements in the group. Five small circles, one big circle. Now once you have those six elements in your group, and again, if you make a mistake picking, don't panic, just hit escape. Go back and try again. Now we're going to do an extrude. Now, if I hit OK, what's going to happen is it's going to build six solid models, which will basically be these little round you know, slugs it's going to create. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to go down and say body one. And this time, the end type, I'll say through all. Now it says select body, and it automatically plugged in body one. Okay? And I'm also going to now tell it to do a cut. Body one, cut. Modify the target means it's going to modify the part itself, and let's hit OK. So through all, body one, cut, and OK. And now it's cut this through the part. Steep. Now the next areas we have is we have these little counter bores around the outside, which go down 630,000 steep. And then we have these two steps they go down uh, 472,000 steep. Now those items there um, can be a little bit tricky because we're now going to take and extrude these sets of geometry. And that's why I added to the group so it's all part of the same group, all 16 elements. I'm now going to do an extrude. Now it says end type is what? I'm going to say up to face and say up to this face right here, it extrudes to there, okay? And But what I want to do is I want to cut it, okay? So I want to use it to cut. Now I don't want to remove the outside because removing the outside would remove the rest of the part. I'm going to say just cut and hit OK. When I do, it should now cut those flats onto the part. And let's turn on our solid, turn back on our solid. And what you see there is that's where the notches are going to be, but the notches are drawn the way the blueprint shows it. Those notches really need to be, be rotated 90 degrees to cut down through the part. So in fact, that's what we're going to do next. Is we'll take this geometry and rotate it 90 degrees. So I'll just do a right click copy, rotate, move it 90 degrees. And I will not use the origin for rotation axis, because if I said yes to origin for rotation axis, it would rotate around the Z axis, it would rotate around this axis line. So I'm going to hit OK, and then the prompt is going to say select center of rotation, which is going to be this line. I say yes, it's going to move it to here. Now I'm ready to cut out the part with this. So I'll go do a, a right click and create, 
solid modeler and extrude. I want to extrude the other direction and that's long enough. 590 will be long enough to extrude it. We want to change our active solid to body 1. We want to cut it and we want to say OK. And when we do, that should create that shape. So now I have those four elements. Now if I hit my escape key, hold my shift key down, pick this rectangle right here. I'm going to go ahead and do a extrude. I'm going to make it go the other direction. Now I need to go further so it goes all the way out of the part. So I'll make this one inch. You hit tab. That's not enough. Let's make it two inches. Tab. There we go. That's enough. Now active solid is body one. We do a cut and OK. And now we have that 45 in there. Yes, print number one shows us a 390 fillet on this corner. 390 fillet. So that's what we're going to put in there. We'll go into a constant fillet, 0.39, along this edge, roll it over, we're going to grab this edge. And we hit OK. That puts a 390 fillet along there. Now from that, what we're going to do is, is if we look at our print, we're going to create this little 39 thousandths wall that's going to go between this diameter that we're working with and this outside ring, which is the uh, where the bottom of this last uh, uh, louver cutout uh, ends. And then we're going to create uh, some geometry around that and put it on all four of the lugs, and then we're going to extrude that through the solid 